ladies and gentlemen, the NASCAR Next Gen Cars. And now, please welcome your host for today's event from NASCAR on Fox, Shannon Spake. It's a tough act to follow right there, I gotta tell you. You guys have been waiting a long time to see those three cars. Certainly, the drivers know how to make an entrance for sure. So welcome to a landmark day in NASCAR history. As all of us in the industry, and of course all the fans, as I just mentioned, have been waiting two years for this day. Hello to everyone in the room, to all the fans watching on NASCAR.com and listening on Sirius XM NASCAR radio. Here today in the room, socially distanced of course, are members of NASCAR, race teams, leaders of the three manufacturers, Chevrolet, Ford, and Toyota, drivers, broadcasters, and the media. So the collection of those in attendance today speaks to the importance of this vehicle and this moment. And of course, the stars of the afternoon are right here, the three next-gen cars. The cars are the result of tireless effort, hours of testing, engineering, and collaboration. And it's really interesting on a week when we are looking back and throwing back to NASCAR history. This day is all about moving forward. So the next-gen car is the most revolutionary vehicle in the history of the sport. It embraces the sport's stock car roots while pushing us into the future through state-of-the-art technology. You can see the sleek design that mirrors its street car counterpart and you can hear the growling engine that many have described as throaty. So there's much to discuss about the next-gen car, which our sport will debut in 2022 at Speed Weeks, and of course, the Daytona 500. If you're wondering how many days left to the Daytona 500, Larry Mack is in the room, and he can provide that information a little bit later. So we're gonna discuss everything that took this car to get to this moment, and to do so, I'd like to welcome in three individuals from NASCAR who really led the charge around the next gen car. NASCAR President Steve Phelps, NASCAR Chief Racing Development Officer Steve O'Donnell, and NASCAR SVP of Racing Innovation, John Probst. Awesome to have you guys up here today. So Steve Phelps, let's start with you. Clearly this is a huge step for this sport. The simple question is, what does this car mean to NASCAR and its future? Hey Shannon, great to have you here. First, I'd like to thank our fans for tuning in. Truly this car is for you. This is a significant moment for our sport. This car is more relevant and includes more innovation than any car in NASCAR history. The styling of the car is clear. I mean, they look unbelievable. Um, I just so incredible to finally be here. Um, we really wanted to get back to a promise that we had made to the fans, which is to put the stock back in stock car. That was an extremely important to us and our fans, but just as important to our fans is the racing on the racetrack. It's hard to believe that the racing could be any stronger than it is last year and the first 11 races this year, but this car has features that will make it even better. Simply put, this car will make our sport healthier and stronger. It's an exciting day for our industry and our fans, and I'm proud of all the work that went into bringing us to today. It's a very exciting moment. So Steve O'Donnell, I mentioned the industry collaboration. That is a very important word when it comes to this car. Uh, it took that to bring it to life. So can you give a little bit more detail on that collaboration and how the entire industry came together to build a car from the ground up? Sure, and for us, it was really a, a blank sheet of paper uh, from where we started, and we wanted to build on what the foundation of NASCAR is, and that's great racing for our race fans, uh, better relevancy for our OEMs, a healthy, strong sport uh, for our car, car owners, uh, potential OEMs, and then you look at just the collaboration that went on throughout the entire industry. Uh, I probably think everybody in this room had a part to play uh, in the development of this car. The OEMs, the teams, the drivers, number of our automotive partners. So the drivers across the Cup Series uh, have 
tested this car. Their input was invaluable during the entire time that we're able to develop it. We've got a test going on right now in Texas. We're still getting more input from the driver. So uh, we went through an exhaustive RFP process for every component of the car to really match the vision of where we wanted to be. So without the hard work of the entire industry, we can truly say that this was the work and the collaboration of the entire industry, uh, but the real focus on our partners at Chevrolet, Ford, and Toyota, who were tremendous throughout this and, and got us here today. Great stuff. So John, you're the lead engineer on this project. From an engineering perspective, some of us might not under, understand engineering language, but we'll, we'll listen in. Uh, can you give us a sense of the process to get from the idea to where we are here today? Sure. Thank you, Shannon. I, I'd say the, the, the key theme behind all this was the collaboration. I can't, you know, under or overemphasize that enough from what Steve said. You know, from the very beginning, we engaged the best minds in our sport, be that from the OEMs or the teams or Goodyear, and even Delara has, has had a big input on this car. And, you know, before we ever made one part, we went through countless revisions. You know, I'm not even sure I'd be able to add up all of the CAD simulation and lab testing time that went into optimizing this car for performance and safety. And I'm not sure I want to all, you know, my boss is here today. Actually, all my bosses are here today, so it's probably best kept, you know, between me and my engineers. But, you know, when you, when you look back to that first track test back at Richmond in October of 2019, this car has now been on every type of track that we race. It's had drivers in it that range from rookies to our champions and not just NASCAR champions. We actually had an IMSA champion in this car to provide feedback. Um, as Steve said, right now it's testing out in Texas. We're approaching 5,000 miles in testing. And if you look at not just the on-track, but if you step back and look at the amount of work the OEMs did along with us in wind tunnels, we're up over 1,100 hours developing this car. And I, I think that, you know, that all culminates in what you see here today. And I, and I think that, you know, from our OEM's perspective and from our perspective, we're pretty happy and we think our fans are going to be pretty excited to see these cars on track next year at the Daytona 500. Um, today is a big milestone, but the work continues. Yeah, they look really sharp for sure. So Steve Phelps, some of the new owners in the sport this year have pointed to the next-gen car as one of the reasons that they've chosen NASCAR. So this is a two-part question. What are your thoughts when you hear that, and what do you expect in the future from an ownership standpoint? Yeah, I think you, you've heard it from the likes of Michael Jordan, Denny Hamlin with 2311 Racing. We've heard it from uh, Trackhouse Racing with Justin Marks and Pitbull, um, and from Live Fast Racing with Matt Teft and, and BJ McLeod. There's an eagerness for ownership to come to this sport, um, and I think this car and the importance of this car and what it represents uh, is at the heart of what that would be. Certainly other things that are positive that are happening in this sport that would allow for new owners to have interest in this sport. The growth that, that the sport's experiencing, the direction that it's going in, and the collaboration that we're seeing around the industry is unlike any we've seen in this sport before. So I'm very bullish on what new ownership would look like. I'm very bullish on the, the owners that we have and the continued collaboration that we have with those owners. All right, as we move along to Steve O'Donnell, uh, obviously your goal is to put the best racing on the racetrack for the millions of NASCAR fans that some of them are watching in right now. So how do you think that the car will do that? Yeah, I think first and foremost, you know, that this will be more in the hands of the drivers, which, which all of our fans want. Um, so when you look at the aspects of the car, particularly around the aerodynamics, you know, reducing some of the downforce that's out there, uh, the cars will be harder to drive in the corners the composite bodies, you know, NASCAR is all about, you know, beating and banging on the racetrack, um, less chance for that cut tire that you see under our current design. So um, we're really looking forward to our drivers going out there and showcasing their abilities. They're the best in the world at doing what they do. So we believe that the car that our engineering team and the entire industry has put together is going to enable us to do that. And then you add the Goodyear tire, um, softer tire compounds, the look and the feel, a lot of race strategy and different options will play out at the racetrack. So, you know, as Steve Felf mentioned, you know, the racing we expect uh, to even elevate above where it is today, uh, but also contribute to the health of the sport for our team owners and the OEMs. Um, obviously, the overall cost associated, and as you look to the future, you know, an avenue for future OEMs to come join us as well. So the future is really bright, uh, and I'm looking forward to seeing our drivers out there tackling this challenge in 2022. All right, John, final question. Uh, what are some of the significant changes, right? If you take the car that we're in right now and, and this car, what are some of the differences? 
Yeah, I think Steve hit on a lot of them really well. And, you know, probably first and foremost are a lot of the exterior things that you see to the car. We have a symmetric body. We have a composite body. So Rubin's racing. So <laughs> there be less of a chance. I'm not saying that there won't be any chance. Our drivers can find ways to, to hit the wall. Um, but I think that you'll see that when they do that now, there will be less consequence. The, the body will be more resilient. There are things in there that are more relevant to OEMs, like independent suspension and, and rack and pinion. Steve mentioned the, the wider, softer tires. There'll be a lot more mechanical grip in the car. Uh, and probably the other key component to this whole thing is that these cars can be run on every type of track that we go to. So you don't need, you know, specialized race cars to go to, you know, a super speedway or a road course. So uh, I know our OEMs are really excited to tell you more about these cars. <laughs> so I'm not going to steal some of their thunder and let them tell you guys a lot more about these cars. Well, thank you guys so much. Congratulations. I know a lot of hard work went into this. Uh, good luck on the road to 2022. Thank you, thank you Shannon. So as you heard from Steve O'Donnell, NASCAR worked hand in hand with its three manufacturer partners, Chevrolet, Ford, and Toyota. To provide some more detail around each version of the next gen car, we have leaders from each manufacturer as well as three of the winningest drivers in the sport. First, let's meet the duo from Chevrolet, the director of NASCAR programs for GM, Eric Warren, and reigning NASCAR Cup Series champion, Chase Elliott. Thank you. All right, Chase, you're the champ, so you go first. It's here. Now that you've seen the car, what do you think? Well, I think it turned out great. Uh, appreciate everybody following along and watching today, first and foremost. But just uh, I, I think it really says a lot about our sport and, and, you know, being a part of Chevrolet and then being such a great partner of mine. Uh, I'm excited about the product that we came up with and a lot of collaboration from all of our key partners at Chevrolet. Uh, within the NASCAR teams to to have a product that looks as good as it does yeah. and as much like the car and the Camaro you can go buy at your local Chevrolet dealership too. So excited about that. Um, selfishly as a driver, I'm excited about the challenge. I think it's going to be tough and I think there's going to be things with this car that I haven't seen as a race car driver yet and until you get on track and, and work through it, it's going to be uh, it's going to be tough. So I'm looking forward to all the things that come with that and trying to reinvent yourself as a driver to to see what you have to do to be good. Yeah, Eric Chase mentioned what it looks like. A lot of folks here are seeing it for the first time. Obviously, the fans as well. Can you take us through some of the highlights? You know, some of the excitement for Chevrolet and some of the main highlights is that the next gen Camaro Z01 is even closer to the production Camaro Z01. A lot of the features are the lower roof line. And the, really the streamlined look of the greenhouse and the short deck lid really brings forward that coupe styling that we see in the production Camaro Z01. The Camaro is a rear wheel drive coupe and now we're racing a car that is a rear wheel drive coupe and that's exciting looking at a lot of the styling and the look of the Camaro. Some of the other features the production Camaro is also shares with the car. The cooling air comes through the nose and comes out the hood vents just like it does on a production Camaro. We have rack and pinion steering, and then one of the more visible looks is the larger forged aluminum wheels, just like we see on the production Camaro. A lot of other features, including the exhaust and sound, and I think the throaty sound that we talk about, it's gonna be exciting for the fans, but really we had a great foundation to start with, with the Camaro Z01, and with the foundation also of our great partners, the, the interaction between Hendrick Motorsports, Richard Childress, Chip Ganassi Racing, all the engineers, designers at Chevrolet, as John said, the, the went on time, the computational fluid dynamics work really brought the Camaro Z01 as we see it as a next gen car, you know, and really is exciting uh, what we see going forward. Uh, you know, it's, I was honored to be a part of that first test at Richmond and you don't get much chance to see a clean sheet design go around the racetrack for the first time. And since that time, all the work with all the teams and all the different owners and the industry and NASCAR has really, I think, brought a great product and all of our Chevy owners are here and certainly Chevrolet, we look forward to seeing all them race the next gen Camaro Z01 in 2022. Awesome stuff. Eric Chase, thank you so much. Good luck this weekend in Darlington. Yep. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. 
So next up, our friends from the Blue Oval. Representing Ford is the Global Director of Ford Performance, Mark Rushbrook, and 2018 NASCAR Cup Series champion, Joey Logano. So Joey's one of the guys that tested the first prototype of the car and certainly much has improved since then. Uh, but what stood out to you in terms of the differences between the two? Well, there's obviously so many differences already that, that a lot of people have already talked about here. Um, and, and getting to drive the car, it was a year and a half ago. That's how long this project's been going on. Uh, and to see some of the, the gains that have been made, like Eric just said a minute ago, it started with a, just a clean sheet of paper. Where, where do we go with it? Um, and I think to today, what you see here with these three cars is incredible. Um, the car is definitely different. I was joking earlier that NASCAR is hitting the next gear with next gen. Literally, there's five gears in this thing now. There's another gear. Uh, so we all have to get used to that, obviously. And when I think what, with what Ford's made here with this Mustang, um, boy, I, you'd be lying if you didn't say this thing's beautiful. It looks aggressive, mean, just like what you see on the street. I think any Mustang enthusiast, Ford lover, would absolutely approve of, of what we're going to bring to the racetrack. Um, so I can't wait to drive this thing. It's going to be a blast. There's going to be so many new challenges, challenges as Chase said earlier, um, you know, us not knowing what's coming next. Uh, what, what's the next corner going to be like? What's it going to be like when we race each other on a speedway, a, a short track, a, a dirt track, what, whatever we go to? We have a lot of unknowns of how we race each other, how we set up these cars. It's going to be such a fun year, right? I mean, yeah. you think about how much fun it's going to be uh, as we all try to evolve so quickly. Uh, to, to become the first winners in this car and, and trying to win the championship next year is going to be a blast. Yeah, Joey said it lightly. This baby is beautiful. <laughs> what are you guys most excited about? Well, let, let me start a little bit just by saying that Ford is proud to be here as part of the sport and part of this day and, and thanking the NASCAR leadership for their vision to create this project, to move the sport forward and the way that this industry goes about it. It's such a collaborative sport. The stakeholders in the sport will work together to make the sport stronger. And that's the way we approach this with the OEMs working together, all of the teams. And it's just great to see the, see the result here today. The car itself, it, first of all, as, a, as an engineer, as a racer, I love everything underneath it, which I know you guys can't see today, but the new architecture, moving it forward, making it more modern, the independent rear suspension, the steering system, the drive line. Uh, the opportunity for powertrain advancements as our world changes for future powertrains. That's all built into this. So we're really excited about that. But the biggest thing is what you can see today and what the fans will see on the track. And as a racing fan, I can't wait to see 40 of these out on track, um, is the body. And what we were able to do by coming up with new proportions for it, this screams Mustang to me, just the proportions of the car with, with the low roof, the long hood, the short deck, those are Mustang proportions, and you, that jumps out immediately. But then the details to put all that, bring all that together, the engineering that goes on, um, the, again, the collaboration. So Roush Fenway, Penske, Stewart Haas, Wood Brothers to collaborate, tell us what they need in this race car to be successful. A lot of CFD runs, a lot of wind tunnel time is what you see here. And the design studio worked very closely with us to bring in the three-dimensional features of the headlights. Um, the signature lighting is very important for us in a design cue for the street Mustang. But I think the biggest advancement is further back in the car, um, actually being able to go wider in the car. And that's the strength of the Mustang. And what I love about this car and the street Mustang is in the stance of the car and the quarter panels to have that width to have that three-dimensional character. And when you see this car coming at you, it just looks mean with that shape down the side of the car. And then when you get a chance to see around the side of the car, and as the fans see it on track, the back end, we're able to put some plan view sweep in it, more character in the rear end. So from every angle, it, it looks like a street Mustang, and we can't see this thing. Can't wait to see this thing go racing. We're so excited. Amen. Looks great. Mark and Joey, thank you so much. Good luck this weekend in Darlington. So finally, we're going to welcome Toyota and president of TRD, David Wilson, plus three-time Daytona 500 winner and NASCAR Cup Series team owner, Denny, <clears throat> excuse me, Denny Hamlin.
So Danny, you're in a unique position as a driver and an owner. So in this case, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how the next gen car will benefit the ownership group in 2022 and beyond. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's an attractive time to, to come into the sport, obviously. And, and this was a big factor in, in our decisions and will be part of our decisions going forward. I think a lot of it has to do with, it, you know, we have a reset in technology and resources that are gonna be going into this car. And we're not at a 20 to 30 year disadvantage by coming into the sport. We'll all to be developing it at the same time in its, uh, in its early existence. Awesome. So David, there's a lot to love about that TRD camera. Camry, all of these cars look so amazing. Can you give us your thoughts and some of the highlights on this particular machine from the TRD perspective? Of course, uh, Shannon. But first, I want to uh, thank NASCAR and our fellow colleagues uh, on the OEM side. Uh, this was an unprecedented collaboration. And, um, and we appreciate the vision and all the work that went into it. And the amazing thing is that we agreed on everything. <laughs> well, not everything, but uh, we, we got it done, and here we are on this special day. So our TRD Camry has been over two years in the making. And once again, it started with a brilliant partnership and collaboration with our friends at Kelty Design, Toyota's in-house design studio. From the proportional uh, styling, the uh, symmetry, the attention to detail in the front grille, the rocker panels on the side, um, the rear tail has more styling than we've ever seen in a NASCAR Camry. Um, the greenhouse has already been talked about. I mean, that just looks fantastic. Uh, clearly, this is the best looking Camry we've ever taken to the racetrack. Personally, my favorite detail there's a modest TRD badge on the rear tail, just like the production Camry. And that says that it's not just a Camry, it's a TRD Camry. And for me, for our over 200 TRD team members, we couldn't be prouder. Finally, a lot of fans have been asking us, why Camry? Why not Supra? And to that, I'll say we're extremely proud of the fact that we race Tundra in the truck series, Supra in the Xfinity series, and Camry in the Cup series. Why not Camry? Um, Denny? It's, I, I it's, think we've been doing okay with it. I yeah. think so. So, uh, so to that, I will send a big shout out to um, all of our Toyota team members in Georgetown, Kentucky, who proudly build the all of our production uh, Camrys. We couldn't do this without their support. Uh, thanks for letting us be on your team. Unfortunately, Denny told me backstage that it does not come with a custom-made matching Air Jordans. Every, every one of yeah. these cars, right? But, but the TRD Camry does come with four doors, and since <laughs> I have two children, it, this is the best car there for me. Go. So There you go. Thank you guys so much. Appreciate it. Good luck getting right. to 2022. Thank you. Good luck this Thank weekend, you. Denny. All right, there you have it. The next-gen era is here. There's still plenty to do before the first time these cars hit the track for the Daytona 500 in February 2022, but it is absolutely incredible that we are here today. As a reminder, everyone, you don't have to wait till Daytona to see the next gen car on the track. Tonight at eight o'clock on FS1, the NASCAR Pro Invitational iRacing Series, the race at Darlington will be run with these cars right here. So that's gonna be really exciting. So we thank all of our guests tonight for their time and their insight and all of the fans at home who tuned in to watch the unveil of the next gen race car. And of course, the rebirth of stock. Good night, everyone. <laughs>